Journey's End by R.C. Sheriff. A dugout near St. Quentin during the First World War. Tick-tock, wind up the clock, and we'll start the day over again. Pom, pom. Hello, Osborne. Hello, honey. Your fellow's taking over this sector. Yes, they're just coming in. That's splendid. Have a drink. Thanks. Oh, uh, don't have too much water. It's rather strong today. <laughs> I wonder what it is they put in the water. Some sort of disinfectant, I suppose. Mm, I'd rather have the microbes. Oh, Jiro. Jiro. Well, Stan asked me to come and take over. He's looking after the men coming in. Ah, splendid. You know, I'm awfully glad you've come. Well, I heard this was a quiet bit of line. Well, yes, in a way. They simply blew us to bits yesterday. Minis, enormous ones, three bang in the trench. Do much damage? Awful. The dugout got blown up and came down in the men's tea. They were frightfully annoyed. <laughs> you know the big German attack's expected any day now. Well, it's been expected for the last month. You here for six days? Yes. Huh. Then I should think you'll get it right in the neck. Well, you won't be far away. Uh, come on. Let's do this handing over. Where's the map? Hmm? Oh, yeah, well, here we are. Well, we hold about uh, 200 yards of front line. We've got a Lewis gun just here and one here in this little sap. Mm -hmm. A sentry post's where the crosses are. Yes. Uh, where do the men sleep? Hmm, I don't know. The sergeant major sees to that. Uh, the servants and signalers sleep in there. Uh, two officers in here and three in the far dugout. <laughs> That is, if you've got five officers. Only four at present, but a new man's coming up tonight. Well, I hope you get better luck than I did with my last officer. He got lumbago the first night and went home. Now he's lecturing young officers on life in the front line. <laughs> five beds, you say. Um, is uh, this the best one? Oh, no. Uh, that's mine. Oh. The ones in the other dugout haven't got any bottoms. You keep yourself in by hanging your arms and legs over the sides. <laughs> Oh, it mustn't hang your legs too low or the rats nor your boots. Oh, you've got many rats here? Oh, I should say roughly about two million. Um, then, of course, I don't see them all. Well, there's nothing else you want to know, is there? Well, you haven't told me anything yet. What about trench stores? Hmm? Oh, you are a fussy old man. Anybody would think you were in the army. Um, you, well, here's the list. Thank you. 115 rifle grenades. Oh, I shouldn't use them if I were you. They upset Jerry and make him offensive. And besides, they're rusty. Uh, then there's 500 Mills bombs, 34 gum boots. Oh, that's 17 pairs. Oh, no. 25 right leg and 9 left leg. Oh. But everything's down here. Mm. Did you check it when you took over? No, I think the Sergeant Major did. Oh, it's quite all right. Well, I expect Stanhope would like to see you before you go. He always likes a word with the company commander he's relieving. How is the dear young boy? Drinking like a fish, as usual? Oh, no, hardly. Oh, it must be pretty rotten for you, being his second in command, and you, such a quiet, sober old thing. He's a long way the best company commander we've got. Oh, he, he's a good chap, I know, but I never did see a youngster put away the whiskey he does. The last time we were resting at Valen, he came to supper and drank a whole bottle in one hour, 14 minutes. We timed him. I suppose everybody cheered him on and said what a splendid achievement it was. When a boy like Stanhope gets a reputation out here for drinking, he he turns into a kind of freak show. Well, it's pretty dull without something to liven people up. He didn't go home on his last leave, did he? No. I suppose he didn't think he was fit to meet Papa, vicar of a country village. Uh, yes, I know. Imagine Stanhope spending his leave in a vicarage sipping tea. <laughs> he went to Paris, didn't he? Yes. I bet it was some leave. Oh. Look, do you know how long he's been out here? Hmm? Nearly three years. He came out straight from school when he was 18. He's commanded this company for a year. Other men come over here and go home again ill. And young Stanhope goes on sticking it month in, month out. Oh, I know. He's a jolly good fellow. I've seen him on his back all day with trench fever. Then on duty all night. Oh, I know. He's a splendid chap. And because he's stuck it till his nerves have got battered to bits, he's called a drunkard. Not a drunkard, just a hard drinker. Oh. But um, you're right about his nerves. They are all to blazes. 
Last time out resting, we were playing bridge and... Oh, I don't remember what it was, some silly little argument, and all of a sudden he jumped up and knocked all the glasses off the table. Lost control of himself. And then he sort of came to and cried. Yes, I know. You heard about it? He told me. Did he? We tried to hush it up. It just shows the state he's in. You know, Osborne, you ought to be commanding this company. Oh, rubbish. No, of course you ought. Ah, finish handing over and stop blithering. Well, there's nothing else to do. What about the logbook? Hmm? Ah, you are a worker. Yeah, here we are. Written right up to date. 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., all quiet. German airman flew over trenches, shot a rat. Did he? No, I shot the rat, you ass. Yeah, well, finish up your whiskey. Mm. I want to pack my bag. I'll uh, leave you that drop in the bottle. Uh, thanks. Ah, I'll be off. Oh, aren't you going to wait and see he's done up? Well, he's so fussy about the trenches. I expect they are dirty, but he'll talk for hours if he catches me. Yeah, well, I hope you have a nice six days. And don't forget to change your clothes if you get wet. No, Papa. And uh, don't forget about the big attack. Oh, no, I mustn't miss that. I'll make a note in my diary. Well, I must be off. Cheer up. Cheer up. Uh, excuse me, sir. Can I lace that one? Oh, yes, do, Mason. Thank you, sir. What are you going to tempt us with tonight? Uh, soup, sir. Mm -hmm. Cutlets and uh, pineapple. Cutlets? Well, sir. Well, yes, sir. Cutlets. Uh, what sort of cutlets? Oh, I shouldn't like to commit myself too deep, sir. Ordinary ration meat? Oh, yes, sir. But a new shape, sir. Smells like liver, but it hasn't got that smooth, wet look that liver's got. <laughs> excuse uh. me, sir. <laughs> this is C Company headquarters, sir. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, very good answer. Yes, right, sir. Oh, hello. Good evening, uh, sir. You the new officer? Uh, yes, they told me to report here. Good. We've been expecting you. Uh, sit down, won't you? Thanks. Uh, I should take your pack off. Oh, right. Will you have a drink? Uh, well, uh... You don't drink whiskey? Oh, yes. Um, just a small one, sir. Whiskey takes away the taste of the water. Oh, yes. <laughs> and the water takes away the taste of the whiskey. <laughs> there. Just out from England? Yes. I landed a week ago. Mm -hmm. Well, here's luck, sir. Uh, good luck. Cigarette. Oh, thanks. Ever been up in the line before? Oh, no, I... Only left school last summer term. Mm, I expect you find it a bit strange. <laughs> yes, I do, a bit. Oh, my name's Osborne. I'm second in command of the company. And uh, you only call me sir in front of the men. I see. Thanks. The other officers call me uncle. Oh, what's your name? Uh, Raleigh. Well, we've only just moved into these trenches, Raleigh. Uh, Captain Stanhope commands the company. I know. It's a frightful bit of luck. Why, do you know him? We were at school together. Were you? At least, of course, I, I was only a kid and he was one of the big fellows. He's three years older than I am. So he's a splendid chap. Isn't he? He was skipper of rugger at Barford and kept wicket for the 11. He's a jolly good bat, too. Did you play rugger and, and cricket? Oh, yes. Of course, I wasn't in the same class as Dennis. I say, I, I suppose I ought to call him Captain Stanhope. No, just Stanhope. Uh, I see. Well, thanks. I wonder if Stanhope will remember you. <laughs> I expect you've grown in the last three years. Oh, I think he'll remember me. You see... Our fathers were friends, and Dennis used to come and stay with us in the holidays. Ah. Of course, at school, I didn't see much of him, but in the holidays, we were terrific pals. Well, he's a fine company commander. Last time he was on leave, he came down to the school. He just got his MC and been made a captain. <laughs> he looked splendid. It, it sort of made me feel... Keen? Yes, keen to get out here. I was frightfully keen to get into Dennis's regiment. I, I thought perhaps with a bit of luck I might get to the same battalion. Well, it's a big fluke to have got to the same company. It's an amazing bit of luck. You know, when I was at the base, I did an awful thing. You see, my uncle's at the base. He has to detail officers to regiments. Oh, General Rally. Yes. Oh. Well, I went to see him on the quiet and asked him if he could get me into this battalion. He bit my head off, said I'd got to be treated like everybody else. Yes. And next day, I was told I was coming to this battalion. It's funny, wasn't it? 
Uh, yes, extraordinary coincidence. And when I got to battalion headquarters and the colonel told me to report to C Company, I could have cheered. I expect Dennis would be frightfully surprised. I've got a message for him. From the colonel? Uh, no, from my sister. Your sister? You see, Dennis used to stay with us, and naturally my sister... Well, perhaps I ought not... Oh, no, that's all right. I, I didn't actually know. They're not uh, officially engaged? No. She'll be awfully glad. I can write and tell her all about him. He doesn't say much in his letters. Can we write often? Oh, yes. Letters are collected every day. Um, you don't think Dennis will mind my sort of forcing myself into his company? I never thought of that. No, of course he won't. But, you know, Raleigh, you mustn't expect to find him quite the same. Oh? Uh? You see, he's been out here a long time, and it tells on a man rather badly. Yes, I suppose it does. You may find he's a little, well, a little bit quick-tempered. <laughs> oh, I know old Dennis's temper. I remember once he, he caught some chaps in a study with a bottle of whiskey. Oh, Lord, the roof nearly blew off. He gave them a dozen each with a cricket stump. <laughs> they were so keen on the fellows in the house keeping fit. He was frightfully down on smoking and that sort of thing. Yes. You must remember he's commanded this company for a long time, and it's a big strain on a man. It must be. Oh, now, we've got five beds here. I'm afraid you will have to wait until the others come and pick the beds they want. Righto. Uh, better wait and unpack when you know where you're sleeping. Righto. Oh, we never undress when we're in the line. Oh, you can take your boots off now and then in the daytime, but it's better to keep pretty well dressed always. I see. Well, thanks. Well, I expect Stanlop will send you on duty with one of us at first, until you get used to it. Are we in the front line here? No, no, that's the support line outside. The front line's about 50 yards further on. How frightfully quiet it is. I thought there'd be an awful row here all the time. <laughs> Most people think that. I expect it's all very strange to you, eh? It's... it's not exactly what I thought. It's just this... this quiet that seems so funny. A mm. hundred yards from here, the Germans are sitting in their dugouts thinking how quiet it is. Are they as near as that? Mm, about a hundred yards. It seems uncanny. It makes me feel we're, we're all just waiting for something. We are, generally. When anything happens, it happens quickly. Mm. Then we just start waiting again. I never thought it was like that. Mm, you thought it was fighting all the time. Eh? <laughs> well, yes, in a way. Uh, do you expect the captain soon, sir? The soup's hot. Oh, he ought to be here very soon now. Uh, this is Mr. Raleigh, Mason. Well, good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. Uh... I've had rather an unpleasant surprise, sir. What's happened? You know that tin of pineapple chunks I got, sir? Yes. Well, I'm sorry to say it's apricots. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> Must have given you a turn. Well, I distinctly said pineapple chunks at the canteen. Well, wasn't there a label on the tin? Uh, no, sir. I pointed that there out to the man. I said, was he certain it was pineapple chunks? I suppose he said he was. Yes, sir. He said a leopard can't change its spots, sir. Uh, what have leopards got to do with pineapple? Well, that's just what I thought, sir. Made me think there was something fishy about it. See, sir, I know the captain can't stand the sight of apricots. Well, haven't you anything else? Well, there's a pink blancmange I've made, sir, but ain't anywhere near stiff yet. Never mind. We must have the apricots and chance it. Only I thought I'd tell you, sir, so as the captain wouldn't blame me. All right, Mason. Well, that sounds like the captain coming now. And Mr. Trotter. I'll go and dish out the soup, sir. Has Hardy gone? Hello, sir. Uh, hello, Trotter. Uh, yes, he cleared off a few minutes ago. Uh, lucky for him, I had a few words I wanted to say to Master Hardy. You never saw the blasted mess those fellows left the trenches in. Dugouts smell like cesspits, rusty bombs, damp rifle grenades. It's perfectly foul. Where are the servants? Uh, in there. Hi, Mason. Come in, sir. Just bring in the soup, sir. Damn the soup. Bring some whiskey. Oh, have a cigarette, Stanhope. Hmm? Oh, thank you, Trotter. Oh, here's the new officer, Stanhope. Just arrived. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I didn't see you in this miserable light. Hello, Stanhope. How did you get here? I was told to report to your company, Stanhope. I see. Rather a coincidence? <laughs> yes. I say, Stanhope, it's a terrible business. We we thought we'd got a tin of pineapple chunks, and it turns out to be apricots. Ah, oh, give me apricots every time. I hate pineapple chunks. Too blooming sickly for me. I'm awfully glad I got to your company, Stanhope. When did you get here? We came up with the transport while you were taking over. I see. Your whiskey, sir. Oh, thank you, Mason. Well, come along, Uncle. Come and sit here. Uh, you better sit there, Raleigh. Uh, right. You, Raleigh? Yes. I'm Trotter. 
Feel a bit odd, I suppose? Yes, a bit. Oh, well, you'll soon get used to it. You'll feel you've been here a year in about an hour's time. Soup, sir. Ah, soup. Hmm. What kind of soup is this, Mason? Uh, yellow soup, sir. Yes, it's got a very deep yellow flavour. Oh. oh, it wants some pepper. Bring some pepper, Mason. I'm very sorry, sir. When a mess box was packed, the pepper was omitted, sir. Oh, I say, but damn it. Well, we must have pepper. It's a, it's a disinfectant. Why wasn't it packed, Mason? It, it was missed, sir. Why? Well, sir, I left it to the... Then I advise you never to leave it to anyone again, unless you want to rejoin your platoon out there. I'm oh, very sorry, sir. Hmm. You send one of the signalers. Yes, sir. Sir, you want it? Sure. Do you know A Company headquarters? Yes, sir. Well, go there at once and ask Captain Willis with my compliments if he can lend me a little pepper. Thank you, sir. War's bad enough with pepper, but war without pepper, I ask you. What's it like outside, Trotter? There's a nasty noise going on up north. These wipers, I expect. I wish we knew more of what's going on. And so do I. Still, my wife reads the papers every morning and writes and tells me. <laughs> what's this, Mason? Meat, sir. I know that. What sort? What sort of cutlet, sir? There's cutlets and cutlets. I oh, know, sir. That one's a cutlet. Well, it won't let me cut it. No, sir. That's a joke. I see, sir. Right, sir. <laughs> Cheer up, Skipper. You do look glum. Mm. I'm tired. Oh, I should turn in and get some sleep after supper. Well, I've got hours of work before I sleep. Well, I'll do the duty roll and see the sound major and all that. Oh, that's all right, Uncle. I'll see to it. Trotter goes on duty directly he's had supper. Rally, you'd better go on with him to learn. Oh, right. Uh, look here, Skipper. It's nearly eight now. Couldn't we make it half past? No. I told Hibbert he'd be relieved at eight. Will you take from eleven till two, Uncle? Right. Hibbert can do from two till four. I'll go on from then till stand two. Well, boys, here we are for six days again. Six blooming eternal days. That's 144 hours, 8,640 minutes. Hey, that doesn't sound so bad. We've done 20 of them already. <laughs> I'm going to draw 144 little circles on a bit of paper. And every hour I'm going to black one in. Uh, that'll make the time go all right. Mm, it's five to eight now. You'd better go and relieve Hibbert. Then you can come back at eleven o'clock and black in three of your blasted little circles. I haven't had my apricots yet. We'll keep your apricots till you come back. I never knew anything like a war for upsetting meals. I'm always down for duty in the middle of one. Well, that's because you never stop eating. Anyhow, let's have some coffee. I'm Mason! Coffee! Coming, sir. Well, I'll get dressed. Come on, Rally. Right. Just wear your belt with a revolver case on it. I must have your revolver to shoot rats. And your gas mask. Come here, I'll show you. Oh, thank you. You wear it sort of tucked up under your chin like a serviette. <clears throat> like this, see? Coffee, sir? Ah, oh, thanks. Uh, thanks. Be company on our right, aren't they, Skipper? Yes, there's 50 yards of undefended area between. You'd better patrol that a good deal. All right, sir. Well, come on, lad. Let's go and see about this here wall. Ah. Will you sleep here, Stanhope? Uh, this was Hardy's bed. No, you sleep there. I'd rather sleep by the table here. I can get up and work without disturbing you. Well, this is a better one. No, you take it. Must have a little comfort in your old age, Uncle. I wish you'd turn in and sleep for a bit. <laughs> sleep? I can't sleep. Well, Hibbert? Everything's very quiet. A bit of sniping somewhere to our left. Some rifle grenades coming over just on our right. Mm, I see. Oh, Mason's got your supper. I, I, I don't think I can manage any supper tonight, Stanhope. It's this beastly neuralgia. It seems to be right inside this eye. Beastly pain gets worse every day. Some hot soup and a good tough chop will put that right. I'm afraid the pain rather takes my appetite away. I, I'm damn sorry to keep on talking about it, Stanhope. Only I, I thought you'd wonder why I don't eat anything much. Well, try and forget about it. Yes. Well, I wish I could. Get tight. I, I think I'll turn straight in for a rest and try and get some sleep. All right, turn in. You're in that dug out there. You go on duty at two. I take over from you at four. I'll tell Mason to call you. All oh, right. Well, thanks, Stanhope. Uh, cheer up. Cheer up. Oh, uh, can, can I have a candle? Here you are. Take one of these. Uh, thanks. Hmm. See that, Uncle? Another little worm trying to wriggle home. Mm. I wonder if he really is bad. He looks rotten. Pure funk, that's all. He's starving himself purposely out for little swine. 
Oh, neuralgia is a splendid idea. No proof, as far as I can see. Oh, I think he's tried hard. How long has he been out here? Three months, I suppose. Now he's decided he's done his bit. He's decided to go home and spend the rest of the war in comfortable nerve hospitals. Well, he's mistaken. I don't see how you can prevent a fellow going sick. I'll have a quiet word with the doctor before he does. No man of mine's going sick before the attack. They're going to take an equal chance together. Rally looks a nice chap. Yes. Good-looking youngster. At school with you, wasn't he? Has he been talking already? Oh, he just mentioned it. It was a natural thing to tell me when he knew you were in command. He's awfully pleased to get into your company. Seems to think a lot of you. <laughs> yes, I'm his hero. Well, it's quite natural. You think so? Small boys at school generally have their heroes. Yes, small boys at school do. And often it goes on as long as... As long as the hero's a hero. It often goes on all through life. I wonder. How many battalions are there in France? Why, we'll say 50 divisions, that's 150 brigades, 450 battalions, that's 1,800 companies. There are 1,800 companies in France, Uncle. Raleigh might have been sent to any one of those, and he comes to mind. Well, you ought to be glad. I like him. I knew you'd like him. Personality, isn't it? Um, look at this picture. Ooh. Raleigh's sister, isn't it? How did you know? Oh, there's a strong likeness. Mm. The photo doesn't show much, really. Just a face. Mm. She looks awfully nice. You're a lucky chap. I don't know why I keep it, really. But why? Isn't she... Well, I thought... What that... did you think? Well, I thought that perhaps she was waiting for you. Yes, she is waiting for me. And she doesn't know. She thinks I'm a wonderful chap, commanding a company. She doesn't know that if I went up those steps into the front line, without being doped with whiskey, I'd go mad with fright. Now, look here, old man. Uh, I meant to say it for a long time, but it, it sounds awful impudent. You've done longer out here than any man in the battalion. It's time you went away for a rest. It's duty. You suggest that I go sick like that little worm in there. <laughs> Neuralgia in the eye. No. <laughs> but the colonel would have sent you down long ago, only... Only what? Only he can't spare you. Oh, rot. He told me. He thinks I'm in such a state I want to rest, is that it? No. He thinks it's due to you. Oh, it's all right, Uncle. I'll stick it out now. May not be much longer now. I've had my share of luck, more than my share... There's not a man left who was here when I came. But it's rather damnable for that boy. Of all the boys in the world to have to come to me. I might have been spared that. Well, you're looking at things in rather a black sort of That way. boy is a hero worshipper. You know what that means at school. I was skipper of rugger and all that sort of thing. Doesn't sound much out here, but at school... Well, damn it, Uncle, you're a schoolmaster, you know. I've just told you what I think of hero worship. Raleigh's father knew mine. I was told to keep an eye on the kid. I made him keen on the right things and all that. His people asked me to stay with them one summer. I met his sister then. Yeah? At first, I, I thought of her as another kid like Raleigh. It was just before I came out here for the first time that I realised what a topping girl she was. <laughs> it's funny how you realise it suddenly. I just afraid to come through the war and do things and keep absolutely fit for her. Well, you've done pretty well. An MC and a company. Well, it was all right at first. When I went on leave after six months, it was, it was jolly fine to feel I'd done a little to make her pleased. <laughs> it was after I came back here in that awful affair on Vimy Ridge... I knew I'd, I'd go mad if I didn't break the strain. I couldn't bear being fully conscious all the time. you felt that, Uncle, haven't you? Mm, yes, often. Well, there were two ways of breaking the strain. One was pretending I was ill and going home. The other was this. Which would you pick, Uncle? Well, I haven't been through as much as you. Well, it's a slimy thing to go home if you're not really ill, isn't it? Well, I think it is. Well, then, cheero! And long live the men who go home with neuralgia. 
I didn't go home on my last leave. I couldn't bear to meet her in case she realised. When the war's over, you'll soon be as fit as ever at your age. Oh, I've hoped that. I'd go away for months and live in the open air and get fit and then go back to her. And so you can. If Raleigh had gone to one of those other 1,800 companies. Well, I don't see why. Oh, for Lord's sake, don't be a damn fool. You know. You know he'll write and tell her I reek of whiskey all day. Why should he? He's not... He, exactly. He's not a little swine who'll deceive his sister. Well, he'll realise that men are different out here. No, it's no good, Uncle. Do you see him sitting there at supper, staring at me and wondering? He's up in those trenches now, still wondering and beginning to understand. All these months he's wanted to be with me out here. Poor little beast. Well, I believe Raleigh will go on liking you and looking up to you through everything. There's something very deep and rather fine about hero worship. Yeah, oh, hero worship be damned. <laughs> you know, Uncle, I'm a fool. I, I'm captain of this company. What's well, that little prick of a boy, Matt? He wants to ride home and tell Madge all about me. Well, he won't, you see, Uncle. Censorship. I censor his letters. Cross out all he says about me. You can't read his letters. Cross out all he says about me. Then we all go west in the big attack. And she goes on thinking I'm a fine fellow forever. And ever. And ever. Oh, it's not as bad as all that. Come and lie down and go to sleep. Go to sleep yourself. I censor his letters, you see, Uncle. Now, you watch and see he doesn't smuggle any letters away. Righto. Now, come and lie down. you had a hard day. Huh? Where's Hardy? Uh, do you say he's gone? Yes, he's gone. Gone, has he? You know, I had a word to say to Master Hardy. I want to tell him to keep his trenches clean. We'll clean them up tomorrow. <laughs> Dear old Uncle. <laughs> clean trenches up with a little dustpan and brush. Make your little apron with lace on it. Mm, that'll be fine. Uh, now, <laughs> come along, old chap. I'll see you get called at two o'clock. You must be tired. Oh, Lord, I'm tired. I ache all over. I feel sick. Oh, well, you'll feel all right in a minute. How's that? Comfortable? Yes, comfortable. Dear old uncle, tuck me up. There we are. Kiss me, uncle. Kiss you'll be blowed. You go to sleep. Yes, I go to sleep. Uh. Mason. Yes, sir. Will you call me at ten minutes to eleven and Mr. Hibbert at ten minutes to two? I'm going to turn in for a little while. Very good, sir. Uh, the peppers come, sir. Oh, good. Very sorry about the peppers, sir. Uh, that's all right, Mason. Good night, sir. Good night. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. And, ah, breakfast. Morning, Osmond. Morning, Trotter. Morning, Rally. Morning, Trotter. Oh, what a lovely smell of bacon, Mason. Yes, I reckon there's enough smell of bacon in here to last for dinner. Well, there's nothing like a good fat bacon rasher when you're as empty as I am. I'm glad you like it fat, Mr. Trotter. Well, I like a bit of lean, too. Well, it was a bit of lean in the middle of yours, sir, but it's uh, kind of shrunk up in the cooking. Bad cooking, that's all. Any porridge? Oh, yes, sir, there's porridge. Lumpy, I suppose. Yes, sir, quite nice and lumpy. Well, take the lumps out of mine. And just bring you the gravy, sir. Very good, sir. You know, Osborne, that man's getting familiar. Oh, he's not a bad cook. <laughs> Might be a lot worse. When I was in the ranks, we had a prize cook. Used to be a plumber before the war. What? Would have seen the stew he made. Thin wasn't the word. Put a bucket full of his stew in a bath and pull the plug and the whole lot would go down in a couple of gurgles. <laughs> I've uh, took the lumps out. Good. Sir. Keep them and use them for dumplings next time we have boiled beef. Very good, sir. Well, I thought you were on duty now. I'm supposed to be. Stan sent me down to get my breakfast. He's looking after things till I finish. He's got a long job, then. Oh, no. I'm a quick eater. 
Hi, Mason. Bacon. Coming, sir. Oh, it's a wonderful morning. Isn't it lovely? Makes you feel sort of young and hopeful. I was up in that old trench under the brick wall just now. Hanged if a blooming little bird didn't start singing. Didn't half sound funny. There's your bacon, sir. Now, if you look down straight on it from above, you can see the bit of lean quite clear, sir. Good Lord, yes, that's it, isn't it? Oh, no, sir. That's a bit of rust off the pan. All right, Mason, that'll be all. Right, sir. Cut us a chunk of bread, Uncle. Uh, how are things going up there? I don't like the look of things. You mean the quiet? Yeah. Standing up there in the dark last night, there didn't seem a thing in the world alive. Except the rat squeaking and my stomach grumbling about that cutlet. Mm, it's quiet even now. Too quiet. A big attack soon, I reckon. I don't like it, Uncle. Uh, pass the jam. Uh, it's strawberry. Is it? Oh, I'm glad we got rid of that raspberry jam. Pips kept behind your plate. Did Stanhope tell you he wants two wiring parties out tonight? Yes. My word, Uncle. Doesn't he look ill? Yes, I'm afraid he's not well. Nobody'd be well who went on like he does. You know when you come up to relieve me last night? Yes. Well, Raleigh and me come back here, and there was Stanhope sitting on that bed drinking a whiskey. He looked as white as a sheet. He drunk the bottle since dinner. I said, hello, and he didn't seem to know who I was. Uncanny, wasn't it, Raleigh? Yes. He just said, better go to bed, Raleigh. Just as if Raleigh had been a school kid. Did he? Uh, look at the sun. Be quite warm soon. It's warm now. First time this year. Hope we have a hot summer. Oh, so do I. <laughs> Funny about that bird. Sort of made me think about my garden of an evening. Walking round in my slippers after supper, smoking my pipe. You keen on gardening? Oh, I used to do a bit of an evening. Mm, I made a rockery when I was at home on leave. I used to cycle out to the woods and get primroses and things like that and try and grow them in my garden. I don't suppose they would. Well, they would if you pressed a bit of moss around them. To make them feel at home, eh? <laughs> They'll be coming out again soon if they've got this sun at home. I reckon they will. I remember one morning last spring, it was coming out of the salient, just when it was getting light in the morning. It was the time when the Bosch was sending over a lot of that gas that smells like pear drops, you know. Uh, I know, uh, phosgene. That's it. We were scared to death of it. All of a sudden, we smelt that funny, sweet smell, and a fellow shouted, Gas! We put on our masks. <laughs> and then I spotted what it was. What was it? Why, a blinking may tree, all out <laughs> in bloom, grown beside the path. <laughs> yeah, we did feel a lot of silly poops putting on gas masks because of a blooming may tree. Yeah, well, i better go and relieve Stanhope. He'll curse like blazes if I don't. I bet he's got a red-hot liver this morning. Uh, I relieve you at 11. That's right. Well, cheer out. Cheer out. Cheer out. You know, Rally, I expect Stanhope will let you go on duty alone now. Will he? About what time? Well, after me, I expect. I from see. about two to four. Good. What do you think about it all, eh? Oh, all right, thanks. <laughs> I feel I've been here for ages. Uh, time passes, though. Are we here for six days? Yes. Seems a long time, doesn't it? <laughs> Does, rather. I can't imagine... The end of six days here. Well, anyhow, we've done 12 hours already. Uh, it's fine when you're relieved and go down the line to billets and have a good hot bath and sit and read under trees. Good Lord, I, I feel I haven't seen a tree for ages. Not a real tree with leaves and branches. How did you feel in the front line? Oh, all right. It seems so uncanny. Everybody creeping about and talking in low voices. Mm -hmm. I suppose you've got to talk quietly when you're so near the German front line. It's only about 70 yards, isn't it? Yes, yes. About the breadth of a rugger field. It's funny to think of it like that. Mm, I always measure distances like that out here. Keeps them in proportion. Well, did you play rugger? Yes, but mostly reffing at school in the last few years. Uh, you were schoolmaster then? Uh, yes, I must apologise. Oh, I don't mind schoolmasters. Oh, thank you. Well, I mean, I, I never met one outside of school. Well, they do get out sometimes. <laughs> Who did you play for? Yeah. The Harlequins. I say, really? Mm. I played for the English team on one great occasion. What? For England? Oh, I was awfully lucky to get the chance. And, oh, it's a long time ago now. Oh, but good Lord, that must have been simply topping. Where did you play? Wing three. I say, I, I never realised you'd played for England. 
tuppence to talk to me now. Oh, it must be awfully thrilling, playing in front of a huge crowd, all shouting and cheering. Ah, you don't notice it when the game begins. Well, I used to get wind up playing at school with only a few kids looking on. Mm, you feel it more when there are only a few. The Germans are really quite decent, aren't they? I mean, outside the newspapers. Yes. Yeah, I remember up at Wipers, we had a man shot when he was out on patrol. Well, we couldn't get him that night. He lay out there, groaning all day. Next night, three of our men crawled out to get him in. When they began dragging him back, a big German officer stood up in their trenches and called out, Carry him! And our fellows stood up and carried the man back. And the German officer fired some lights for them to see by. The next day, we blew each other's trenches to blazes. It all seems rather silly, doesn't it? Yes, it does, rather. I started a letter when I came off duty last night. How do we send letters? Uh, the quartermaster stand takes them down in the evenings. I think I'll go and finish it now. Oh, come and write it in here. It's more cheery. It's all right, thanks. Uh, I've rigged up a sort of little table beside my bed. Righto. What a pound smell of bacon. Oh, hello, stand up. Uh, yes, we've got bacon for breakfast. So I gather. Have you told Raleigh about rifle inspection? Oh, no. Raleigh? Yes? You inspect your platoon's rifles at nine o'clock. Oh, right, sir, sir. Would you like a nice bit of bacon, sir? Uh, no, thanks. I'll have a cup of tea. Right, sir. The uh, colonel says a German prisoner gave the day of attack as the 21st. The day after tomorrow. The second dawn from now. Then it'll come while we're here. Yes. It'll come while we're here. Oh, well. Here's your tea, sir. Would you like this nice plate of sardines, sir? I should loathe it. Very good, sir. Did the colonel have much to say? Only that we can't expect any help from behind. We are not to move from here. I see. We'll wire ourselves in as strongly as possible. Well, I'm glad it's coming at last. I'm sick of waiting. Mm. Look, what's this extraordinary thing? <laughs> Trotter's plan to make the time pass by. 144 circles, one for each hour of six days. How many hours are there till dawn on the 21st? Oh, goodness knows. Not many, I hope. Uh, it's nearly nine o'clock now. 24 till nine tomorrow. 12 till nine at night. That's 36. 45 altogether. 5, 10, 15... Well, what are you going to do? At the end of the 45th circle, I'm going to draw a picture of Trotter being blown up in four pieces. Oh, now, don't spoil his chart. It took him an hour to make that. <laughs> he won't see the point. He's no imagination. No, I don't suppose he has. <laughs> Funny not to have any imagination. Must be rather nice. I suppose all his life, Trotter feels like you and I do when we're drowsily drunk. Poor chap. I suppose if Trotter looks at that wall, he just sees a brown surface. He doesn't see into the earth beyond. The worms wandering about around the stones and roots of trees. I wonder how a worm knows when it's going up or down. Oh, when it's going down, I suppose the blood runs into its head. Oh, worms haven't got any blood then I don't suppose it ever does know. Rotten if it went on going down when it thought it was coming up. I expect that's the one thing worms dread. <laughs> Do you think this life sharpens the imagination? It must. Whenever I look at anything nowadays, I see right through it. Looking at you now, there's your uniform, your jersey, shirt, vest, and beyond that... Oh, let's talk about something else. Croquet, or the war. <laughs> Sorry, it's... Uh... It's a habit that's grown on me lately. Till I get frightened and stop. Bit of nerve strain, that's all. You don't think I'm going potty? Oh, Lord, no. <laughs> uncle, you dear old uncle, you don't really know, do you? You just pretend you do to make me feel all right. When people are going potty, they never talk about it. They keep it to themselves. Oh, well, that's all right, then. I had that feeling this morning, standing out there. By the way, did you see the sunrise? Mm, splendid this morning. I was looking across at the Bosch trenches and right beyond, not a sound or a soul. Yet you knew thousands of guns were hidden there, already cleaned and oiled, millions of bullets lying in pouches, thousands of Germans waiting and thinking. Then gradually that feeling came. I never knew the sun could rise in so many ways till I came out here. Green and pink and... Red and grey? Yes. Hi, Mason. Yes, sir. Bring some mugs and a bottle of whiskey. Sir. So early in the morning? Oh, just a spot. It's, it's cold in here. 
Whiskey, sir? Oh, thanks. You going to have one, Uncle? Mm, not now, thanks. You go on duty at 11, don't you? Uh, yes, I relieve Trotter. Well, Riley better go on at one o'clock and stay with you for an hour. Then he can stay on alone till four. Right, sir. What's Riley doing now? Finishing a letter. Did you tell him? About what? Censorship. Oh, you don't mean that seriously? Mean it? Of course I mean it. Officially, I'm supposed to read all your letters. Oh, damn it all, Uncle. Imagine yourself in my place. But he'll say nothing rotten about you. You think so? After you'd gone on duty last night, I got up. Uh, I was feeling bad. I, I forgot that Raleigh was out there. Then he came in with Trotter and looked at me. After the night air, this place must have reeked of candle grease and rats and whiskey. One thing a boy like that can't stand is a smell that isn't fresh. He looked at me as if I hit him between the eyes. Oh, you imagine the thing. Oh, no need to imagine. Why can't you treat him like any other young Uncle, it... Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right, Rally. Going to inspect rifles? Uh, yes. Well, you needn't bother if the wood's a bit dirty. Uh, just the barrels and magazines and all the metal parts. Uh, right, sir. Mm -hmm. And see there's plenty of oil on it. And look at the ammunition in the men's pouches. Uh, right. Where do we put the letters to be collected? Uh, oh, just on the table. Oh, thanks. You leave it open. Open? Yes, I have to censor all letters. Oh, but uh, I haven't said anything about where we are. It's the rule that letters must be read. Oh, uh, I didn't realise that. Uh, <laughs> well, I think I'll just leave it then. Give me that letter. But, Dennis. Give me that letter. But, well, it's private. Do you understand an order? Give me that letter. But I tell you, there's nothing. Dennis, I haven't read. Don't that... Dennis me. Stand up's my name. You're not at school. Go and inspect your rifles. Do you understand an order? Right. Good heavens, Stan. I'm commanding this company, Osborne. I ask for advice when I want it. Very well. Oh, God, I don't want to read the blasted thing. You'll let it go, then? I don't care. Shall I glance through it for you? If you like. I don't want to. You better, I can't. Do you want to hear? I suppose I'd better know. Uh, he begins with a description of his getting here. Um, he doesn't mention the names of any places. And what does he say, then? Oh, the last piece is about you. Go on. He says, um, and now I come to the great news. I reported at battalion headquarters, and the colonel said, you report to C Company, Captain Stanup. Can't you imagine what I felt? I was taken along to some trenches and shown a dugout. There was an awfully nice officer there, quite a, quite old, with grey hair. And then later, Dennis came in. He looked tired, but that's because he worked so frightfully hard. Then I went on duty in the front line, and the sergeant told me that Dennis is the finest officer in the battalion, and the men simply love him. I'm awfully proud to think he's my friend. That's all. Shall I stick it down? Yes. Please. Ah, Sergeant Major, I want to talk with you. Yes, sir. Uh, sit down. Have whiskey. Thank you, sir. Uh, help yourself. Thank you, sir. Oh, I say, you won't taste that. Take a proper one. Oh. Thank you, sir. <coughs> well, uh, here's your very good health, sir. Cheerer. Now, look here, Sergeant Major. We must expect this attack on Thursday morning at dawn. Very good, sir. We're to hold these trenches, and no man's to move from here. Very good, sir. Now, when the attack begins, I shall take charge of the left and Mr. Osborne the right. You will be with Mr. Osborne, Sergeant Baker with me. Nine and ten platoons will move over here. Eleven and twelve platoons to the left. I see, sir. Anything you want to know? Uh, well, sir, <coughs> when, the, uh, when the attack comes, of course, we beat them off. But um, what if they keep on attacking? And then we keep on beating them off. Yes, sir, but what I mean is they're... Um, Bound to make a big thing of it. Oh, I think they will. 
Well, sir, if they don't get through the first day, they'll attack the next day and the next. <laughs> They're bound to. Then, uh, oughtn't we to fix up something about, um, well, uh, falling back, sir? Oh, no, there's no need to. You see, this company's a lot better than A and B companies on either side of us. Oh, quite, sir. Well, then, if anyone breaks, A and B will break before we do. Then we can fire into the Bosch as they try and get through the gaps on our sides, and, uh, We'll make a fine mess of them. Yes, sir, but, but what happens when the Bosch has all um, got around the back of us? Then we advance and win the war. Win the war. Uh, very good, sir. Our orders are to stick here, Sergeant Major. If you're told to stick where you are, you don't make plans to retire. Quite, sir. Well, are you there, Philip? Yes, Uncle. What's the matter? The Colonel's up here. He wants to see you. Oh, right. All right, Stanham. I'll come down. Uh, anything more, sir? No, I don't think so. I'll see you at stand two this evening. Very good, sir. Ah, morning, Sergeant Major. Good morning, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, stand up. Hmm. Strong smell of bacon. Yes, sir. We had some bacon for breakfast. <laughs> Lovely day. Splendid, sir. I'm glad you're alone. I've got some rather serious news. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Will you have a drink? Well, thanks. Just a spot. Uh, sit, sit down, sir. Thanks. Well, here's luck. Cheerio, sir. What's the news, sir? The Brigadier came to see me this morning. The Bosch began relieving his frontline troops yesterday. They're bound to put in certain regiments where they intend to make the hardest push. Naturally. And the General wants us to make a raid to find out who's come into the line opposite here. I see. When? He said tonight. Oh, but that's absurd. I told him so. I said the earliest would be tomorrow afternoon. A surprise daylight raid under a smoke screen. I think daylight best. There's not much moon now, and it's vitally important to get hold of a Bosch or two. Quite. I suggest sending two officers and ten men. Just opposite here, there's only 70 yards of no-man's land. Tonight, the trench mortars can blow a hole in the Bosch wire, and you can cut a hole in yours. Harrison of the trench mortars is coming in to dinner with me this evening to discuss everything. I'd like you to come, too. Eight o'clock suit you? Very good, sir. I'll leave you to select the men. You want me to go with them, sir? Oh, no, Stanham. I can't let you go. No. I want one officer to direct the raid and one to make the dash in and collar some Bosch. Who do you suggest, sir? Well, I suggest Osborne for one. He's a very level-headed chap. He can direct it. And then there's uh, Trotter. <laughs> but he's a bit fat, isn't he? Not much good at dashing in. No. Hibbert? What do you think of Hibbert? I don't think so. No. Uh, why not send a good sergeant, sir? No, the men expect officers to lead a raid. Yes, yes, there is that. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking of that youngster I sent up to you last night. Really? Yes, just the type. He's awfully new to it. All to the good. His nerves are sound. It's rotten to send a fellow who's only just arrived. Well, who else is there? I could send an officer from another company. Oh, Lord, no, we'll do it, sir. Then I suggest Osborne to direct the raid and rally to make the dash with ten good men. You select the men and talk to Osborne and rally about it. Very well, sir. And better send Osborne and rally down to me in the morning to talk things over. No, better still, I'll come up here first thing. Right, sir. It's all a damn nuisance, but after all, it's necessary. I suppose it is. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, sir. I, I say, Stella. Oh, hello, Hibbert. I thought you were asleep. I, I just wanted a word with you. Fire away. But this neuralgia of mine, I... I'm awfully sorry. I'm afraid I can't stick it any longer. I know. It's rotten, isn't it? I've got it like hell. You have? I've had it for weeks. Well, well I'm sorry, Stanley, but it's no good. I, I've tried hard, but I must go down. Down? I... Where? Oh, I go sick. I, I must go into hospital, have some kind of treatment. I'll go right along now, I think. You are going to stay here. No, I, I'm going down to see the doctor. He, he'll send me to hospital when he understands. I've seen the doctor. He won't send you to hospital, Hibbert. He'll send you back here. He promised me he would. So, you can save yourself a walk. I have a perfect right to go sick if I want to. The, the men can. Why can't an officer? No man is sent down unless he's very ill. There's nothing wrong with you, Hibbert. You're going to stay here and see the attack through with the rest of us. <laughs> I tell you, the pain's nearly sending me mad. I'm going now. You, you can't stop me. I'll get my stuff. It's packed. We'll see. Let's get by, Stanham. 
You're going to stay here and do your job. I can't. Don't you understand? I've got a lot of work to do. No time to waste. Once and for all, you're going to stay here and see it through. I shall die of this pain if I don't go. Better die of the pain than be shot for deserting. What do you mean? You know what I mean. I have a right to see the doctor. Dr. Preston's never let a shirker pass him yet, and he's not going to start now, two days before the attack. Stan up! If you only knew how awful I feel! Please, let me get by. Let me go by. God, you little swine. You know what that means, don't you? Striking a superior officer. Never mind, though. I won't have you shot for that. Let me go. If you won't... I'd have you shot for deserting. And I'd rather spare you the disgrace. I'll give you half a minute to think. You either stay here and try and be a man, or you try to get out of that door to desert. If you do that, there's going to be an accident. Do you understand? I'm fiddling with my revolver, do you see? Cleaning it. And it's going off by accident. It often happens out here. It's going off, and it's going to shoot you between the eyes. You daren't. I give you half a minute to decide. Half a minute from now. <laughs> well, go on then. Shoot. I swear I'll never go in those trenches again. Shoot. Fifteen more seconds. Well, go on, I'm ready. Ten. Five. Good man, Hibbert. I like the way you stuck that. Why didn't you shoot? Stay here, old chap, and see it through. <laughs> Stan up. I've tried like hell. I swear I have. Every sound up there makes me all cold and sick. You don't understand. It's got worse and worse now. I can't bear it any longer. Try a drop of this whiskey, old chap. No, thanks. Go on, drink it. I know what you feel, Hibbert. I've known all along. Oh, how can you know? Because I feel exactly the same. Why didn't you tell me instead of talking about neuralgia? We all feel like you do sometimes, if only you knew. Sometimes I feel I could just lie down on this bed and... Pretend I was paralysed or something. I can't bear to go up into those awful trenches again. When are you due to go on? Quite soon. At four. Well, shall we go on together? We know how we both feel now. Shall we see if we can stick it together? I can't. Now you just go and have a quiet rest. Then we'll go out together. Hmm? What about it? I'll... I'll try. Good man. Uh, you, you won't say anything, Stanham, about this? If you promise not to tell anyone what a blasted funk I am. <laughs> no. <laughs> Splendid. Now go and have ten minutes rest and a smoke. Then we'll go up together. It's awfully decent of you, Stanov. And thanks most awfully. That's all right. <sighs> will you have a nice cup of tea, sir? Can you guarantee it's nice? Well, sir, it's a bit oniony. But that's only because of the saucepan. In other words, it's onion soup with tea leaves in it. Uh, not till dinner time, sir. <laughs> right, Mason. Bring two cups of onion tea. One for Mr. Hibbert. Very good, sir. Oh, will you have a nice cup of tea, Mr. Osborne? Oh, please, Mason. Very good, sir. The Colonel's been talking to me, Uncle. Hmm. About the attack? Partly. We've got to make a raid. Oh. Tomorrow afternoon, two officers and ten men. Who's going? You and Raleigh. Um, why rally? Well, the colonel picked you to direct and rally to dash in. I see. The brigade wants to know who's opposite here. Where do we raid from? Out of the sap on our left. Where's the map? Here we are. Look, straight across to this sentry post of the Bosch, 60 yards. Mm -hmm. Tonight we'll lay out a guiding tape as far as possible. You'll ask for volunteers, I suppose? Yes, I'll see the sergeant major now and get him to go round for names. Your tea, sir. Oh, uh, keep it hot, Mason. Will you take this cup, Mr. Osborne? Oh, thank you, Mason. Uh, take the other end to Mr. Hibbert in there. Very good, sir. Shan't be long, Uncle. Uh, Righto. Tea ready? Uh, yes. Why has Hibbert got his tea in there? I don't know. Oh, Lord, I do feel frowsy. Oh, had a fine sleep, though. 
And the colonel came here while you were asleep. We've got to make a raid tomorrow afternoon. Oh, Lord. All of us? Raleigh and I. But he's only just come. Mm, apparently, that's the reason. Oh, what a blasted nuisance. Yes, it is, rather. I reckon the Bosch are already waiting for it. Did you hear about the raid just south of here the other night? The trench mortars go and knock an hole in the Bosch wire. And in the night, the Bosch went out and tied bits of red rag on each side of the hole. Yes, I heard about that. And even then, our fellows had to make the raid. Oh, it was murder. Mm. Oh, doesn't this tea taste of onions? <laughs> it does a bit. Mason! Yes, sir? This tea tastes of onions. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, sir. Onions do have such a way of cropping up again. Yes, but we haven't had onions for days. I know, sir. That's what makes it so funny. Well, you better do something about it. I'll look into it, sir. Joking apart, it's ridiculous making a raid when the Bosch are expecting it. Well, we're not doing it for fun. I know. Oh, you, you might avoid talking to Raleigh about it. I'm sorry he's got to go. He's a nice young fella. What are you reading? Oh, just a book. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. <laughs> Why, that's a kid's book. Yes. You aren't reading it. Yes. Haven't you read it? No. You ought to. How doth the little crocodile improve his shining tail and pour the waters of the Nile on every golden scale? How cheerfully he seems to grin and neatly spread his claws and welcomes little fishes in with gently smiling jaws. I don't see no point in that. Exactly. That's just the point. You are a funny fella. The sergeant major's getting volunteers. Good. Uh, sorry to hear about the raid, Skipper. Mm, so am I. What do you make the time? Uh, just on four. Was Hibbert asleep when you came out of there? No, he was just lying on his bed smoking. Hibbert? I'm, I'm ready, Stanner. Have you had some tea? Yes, thanks. Uh, I shall be out there some time, Uncle. Well, I say, why don't you have a rest? You've been on the go all day. Oh, there's too much to do. Ready, Hibbert? Yes, I'm on my ladder. Okay. Can't understand that little fella. Do you see his eyes? All red. He told me in there he'd got hay fever. A rotten thing, hay fever. If you ask me, he's been crying. Maybe. I, I say, do you mind? I I just want to get a letter off. Oh, sorry. I'll get one off to me old lady. She's wrote and asked if I've got fleas. Have you? Oh, I've got something. I wish it was fleas. I say, Stanhope's told me all about the raid. It's just you and me, isn't it? And ten men. Yes, tomorrow, just before dusk. Were well, you and I picked specially? Yes. I say. Mason, make that coffee hot and strong. Very good, sir. Oh, oh here's the colonel, sir. Everything ready? Yes, sir. You've no news, then? I'm afraid not. It's got to be done. But surely the brigadier must now realize... Now, look here, it. Stanhope. I've done all I can, but my report's got to be at headquarters by seven this evening. If we wait till it's dark, we shall be too late. Why seven? They've got some conference. They can't have it later because of dinner, I suppose. Lots of raids have taken place along the line today. Headquarters naturally want all the information they can get as early as possible. Mm. Meanwhile, the Bosch is sitting with a dozen machine guns trained on that hole waiting for our fellows. Well, I can't disobey orders. Why didn't the trench mortars blow a dozen holes in different places? So the Bosch wouldn't know which one we were going to use. It took three hours to blow that one. Where's Osborne and Raleigh? They're up in the sap having a last look round. What do you make the time, sir? Um, exactly 19 minutes to. The smoke ought to blow across nicely. The wind's just right. Now, bring the prisoners straight back here. We'll question them right away. Why not take them down to your headquarters? Well, the Bosch are bound to shell pretty heavily. I don't want the risk of the prisoners being knocked out before we've talked to them. <sighs> All right. It's no good getting depressed. After all, it's only 60 yards. The Bosch will be firing into a blank fog. You know quite well I'd give anything to cancel the beastly affair. I know you would, sir. Have these red rags on the wire upset the men at all? Well, it's hard to tell. They naturally take it as a joke. They say the rags are just what they want to show them the way through the gap. <laughs> That's the spirit, Stan. Well, Osborne, everything ready? Uh, yes, I think we're all ready, sir. I make it just a quarter to. Mm -hmm. That's right. The men are going to stand by at three minutes to. The smoke bombs drop exactly on the hour. Uh, would you like to go up and speak to the men, sir? 
Well, don't you think they'd rather be left alone? Well, I think they would appreciate a word or two, sir. Oh, all right. Well, uh, good luck, Osborne. I'm certain you'll put up a good show. Thank you, sir. And rally, just go in like blazes, grab hold of the first Bosch you see and bundle him across here. Right, sir. And if you succeed, I'll recommend you both for the MC. Well, that's very kind of you, sir. Well, good luck to you both. Thank you, sir. Oh, um, don't forget to empty your pockets of papers and things. Oh, uh, no, um, I'll go and do it. Uh, stand up. Yes. I say, um, don't think I'm being morbid, but... Would you mind taking these? There's this letter, my watch, and... Uh... Sure. Until you come back, old man. Just in case. Would you send them along to my wife? You're coming back, old man. <laughs> what on earth should I do without you? <laughs> Goodness knows. <laughs> Must have somebody to tuck me up in bed. Well, I'll... Uh, I'll see you up in the sap before you go. Right. Just have a spot of rum in that coffee. Right, oh. Cheerio. Well, that's done. <sighs> Just time for a small pipe. Good. I'll have a cigarette, I think. Uh, here you are. I say, I'm always smoking yours. That's all right. What about this coffee? Oh, sure. Are you going to have a drop of rum in it? But don't you think it might make us a bit muzzy? Well, I'm just having the coffee as it is. I think I will, too. We'll have the rum afterwards, eh? To celebrate. That's a much better idea. How do you feel? All right. I've got a sort of empty feeling inside. That's just what I've got. Wind up. I keep wanting to yawn. That's it. Wind up. It'll pass off directly we start. I wish we could go now. Well, we've got eight minutes yet. Oh, Lord. Uh, let's just have a last look at the map. Uh, directly the smoke's thick enough, I'll give the word. And you run straight for this point here. When I get to the Bosch wire, I lie down and wait for you. Uh, don't forget to throw your bombs. Uh, no, I've got them here. Well, I shout, right in you go with your eight men. Pounce on the first Bosch you see and bundle him out to me. right -o. Then we come back like blazes. The whole thing will be over quite quickly? Well, I reckon with luck we should be back in three minutes. Well, as quick as that? Mm, I think so. And now, uh, let's forget all about it for, for six minutes. Oh, Lord, I can't. You must. How topping if we've both got the MC. Yes. Uh, your coffee sweet enough? Yes, thanks. It's a jolly good coffee. I wonder what the Bosch are doing over there now. I don't know. Do, do you like coffee better than tea? Hmm? No, I do for breakfast. Do these smoke bombs make much row when they burst? Not much. Personally, I like cocoa for breakfast. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, why shouldn't I have cocoa for breakfast? No, I mean, I'm sorry to keep talking about the raid. It's so difficult to, to talk about anything else. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things. Of shoes and ships and sealing wax, of cabbages and kings. Uh, and why the sea is boiling hot and whether pigs have wings. Quick, let's talk about pigs. Black pigs or white pigs? Black pigs. In the New Forest, you find them quite wild. You know the New Forest? Rather, my home's down there. It's just outside Lyndhurst. Oh, I know Lyndhurst well. I like it more than any place I know. I think I do, too. Of course, it's different when you've always lived in a place. You know, they say there are ruins somewhere in the forest of villages that William the Conqueror pulled down. Yes, I know. We often used to look for them, but we haven't found them yet. You must come and help look one day. I'll find them all right. Then you can write to the papers. Dramatic discovery of Professor Osborne. It's awfully fascinating, digging like that. It must be. Is it time yet? Two minutes. Oh, I wish we had a good hot bath waiting for us when we get back. So do I. We're having something special for dinner, aren't we? It's supposed to be a secret. Mason dropped a hint. <laughs> a fresh chicken sent up from Noel Farm. And the most awful luxury, two bottles of champagne and half a dozen cigars. One each, and one spare in case one explodes. I've never smoked a cigar. Oh, it's bound to make you sick. Uh, I say... Here's your ring. I'm, um, I'm leaving it here. I don't want the risk of losing it. Oh. Well, I think perhaps we ought to get ready. Yes. Right-o. I'm not going to wear a belt, just my revolver with the lanyard around my neck. I see. 
I feel better with this in my hand, don't you? Yes, yeah, something to hold. Uh, loaded all right? Yes. I do hate leaving a pipe when it's got a nice glow on the top like that. <laughs> What's a pity? Three minutes to. I think we'd better go. Righto. I'm glad it's you and I together, Ali. Are you... really? So am I. Awfully. Oh, we must put up a good show. Yes, rather. Good luck, sir. Oh, thanks, Mason. Good luck, Mr. Rally. Thanks. Stand up. All right, sir. Come down quickly. How many? Only one. Hurt, sir? No. No, it's all right. Take him down, Sergeant Major. Come here, sir. You won't want me, will you, sir? Well, uh... I want to go and see those Come men. On. All right. Kiss me, Millet. Come on. Come on. <laughs> all right, sonny, all right. We ain't going to hurt you. Mercy. Mister... Mercy. Oh, come on, lad. Get up. Go uh, on. <coughs> uh, was is sein regiment? Württembergisches. Was is the number von sein regiment? 20. 20th Württembergers. Wann kommen Sie hier? Gestern Abend. Wo kommen Sie hier? Mein Geburtsort. What's that? You wish to know where I was born? No. What town did you come up to the line from? I, I do not tell you. Oh, well, that's all right. Search him, Sergeant Major. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's this? Looks like his paybook, sir. Good. There's uh, another small book. Nine, nine. Yeah, stop Listen that. Listen to me. Let me please keep that. Ah, come on. Let go. <laughs> Let now, go. Look like letters may be useful. Is that all, Sergeant Major? Uh, well, a few, a few oddments here, sir. A bit of string, pocket knife, a bit of pencil, and a stick of chocolate, sir. Let him have those back, except the pocket knife. Very good, sir. <coughs> here you are, Sonny. All right, Sergeant Major. Send him straight back to my headquarters. Very good, sir. Come on, Sonny. Up you come. Up you come. Splendid. Oh, hello, Stanup. Splendid, this paybook. We've got all we wanted. I must go right away and phone the brigadier. He'll be very pleased about it. It's a feather in our cap, Stanup. How awfully nice. If the brigadier's pleased. Uh, the raiding party, are they all safely back? Did you expect them to be all safely back, sir? What? Um, Four men and rally safely back, sir. I'm sorry. That's six men. And Osborne? Yes, sir. Poor Osborne. Still, it'll be awfully nice if the brigadier's pleased. Don't be silly, Stanham. Do you know what happened to Osborne? Hand grenade while he was waiting for rally. I'm very sorry. And the six men? Machine gun bullets, I suppose? Yes. Yes, I was afraid. Ah, rally. Well done, my boy. I'll get you a military cross for this. Sit down here, my boy. Have a good rest. Well, I must be off. Very well done. I 
I say, I... Must you sit on Osborne's bed? Sorry. <laughs> oh, Skipper, what did you say to that? I simply drew myself up and said, very well, mademoiselle, have it your own way. And she did? <laughs> no, she didn't. Oh, 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 Skipper, you are a screamer, no mistake. <laughs> I say, Stella, hmm? I've never shown you these picture postcards, have I? Hmm? No. And where'd you get these from? In Bethune. Oh, she's all right, isn't she? Too fat. I don't know. No, much too fat. What do you think, Trotter? Mm, all, all right, isn't she? Well, I don't know. If you ask me, I'd rather have a decent picture of Margaret oh, Peer. Oh, you don't understand, Art. Mm. Oh, there's a nice pair of legs for you. Mm? Too thin. Aren't they, Trotter? Mm, scraggy, I call them. Hey, Mason! Yes, sir? Bring some whiskey. Yes, sir. What? Whiskey on top of champagne? Why not? <laughs> well, I don't know. Doesn't sound right to me. I feel as if somebody's blown me up with a bicycle pump. <laughs> you look it, too. Oh. <laughs> Whiskey, sir. Yeah. Uh, I thought I'd better tell you, sir, this is the last bottle. The last bottle? Why, we bought six. I know, sir, but five's gone. Well, where the blaze has it gone to? Well, sir, you remember there was one on the first night, and then... Oh, for heaven's uh, sake, don't go through them one by one. This will last till sunrise. Sunrise tomorrow, my lads. Oh, forget that. You sir. bet we will. Now then, who's for a spot of whiskey? I reckon I'm about full up. I'd like a nice cup of tea, Mason. Very good, sir. Tea? Yes, that's what I want, a decent cup of tea. Uh, well, you'll have a decent spot, won't you, Hibbert? Yes, I'm game. Uh, oh. Just a cup of tea, then I'll go and relieve young Rally. Pity he didn't come down to supper. I told him to come down for an hour and let Sergeant Major take over. Wonder why he didn't come. Oh, that lad's too keen on his duty. You know, he told me he liked being up there with the men better than down here with us. He said that? Mm, yes. I told him about the chicken and champagne. He stared at me and said, You're not having that, are you? <laughs> Just as if he thought we were going to chuck it away. <laughs> I reckon that raid shook him up more than we thought. I like that youngster. He's got pluck. I hope he gets the MC. He's just the kind of kid I'd like if I ever had a kid. Strong and plucky. Oh, forget about the blasted red. You think I want to talk about it? No, but... Well, shut up. All right, all right. We've been having a jolly decent evening till you started blabbing about the war. I didn't start You it. did? All right, all right. Did I ever tell you the story about the girl I met in Soho? I don't know. I expect you did. Well, I, I'd been to this dance. I was coming home late. Yes, and it's and late now. You go on duty at 11. You better go and get some sleep. Well, I'm as fresh as a daisy. You may be, but go to bed. What? I said, go to bed. I'm tired. Well, you'd better go to bed. <laughs> What was that you said? I was only joking. Clear uh, out of here. Well, I say, look here. Get out of my sight! Oh. All right. <sighs> little worm gets on my nerves. Poor little bloke. Never seen him so cheerful before out here. And his repulsive little mind make you sick. <sighs> Nothing upsets you, does it? You're always the same. Always the same, am I? Ah, little you know. You never get sick to death of everything, or so happy you want to sing. I don't know. I whistle sometimes. Yeah, but you always feel the same. I feel all blown out now. <laughs> Easy, but it's postcards. Funny a bloke carrying pictures like this about. Satisfies his lust, I suppose, poor little fellow. Well, I'll go and relieve young Rally. Pity he didn't come down to supper. Well, cheer out. You uh, realise you're my second in command now, don't you? Well, you hadn't said nothing about it, but... Well, you are. Right, I, Skipper. Thanks. I won't let you down. After your duty, have a decent sleep. We must be ready at half past five. Right, I, Skipper. There's a bit of mist rising. Is there? Mason? Yes, sir? You can bring Mr. Raleigh's dinner. Very good, sir. Here, sir. Nice and hot. A 
Lieutenant. I thought I told you to come down to dinner at 8 o'clock. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I, I didn't think you... Uh, well, you didn't think I... Uh, what? I didn't think you'd mind if I didn't. I see. And why do you think I asked you? I'm sorry. Hmm. Well, we've kept your dinner. Oh, it's awfully good of you, but I had something to eat up there. What do you mean, exactly? You brought the tea round while I was on duty. Well, I had a cup and, and some bread and cheese. Are you telling me you've been feeding with the men? Well, Sergeant Baker suggested that So you that take I'm... your orders from Sergeant Baker? No, but you I You eat that... the men's rations when there's barely enough for each man? They asked me to share. Now, look here. I know you're new to this. Well, I thought you'd have the common sense to leave the men alone to their meals. Well, why did they ask me if they didn't mean it? So you know more about my men than I do. I'm sorry, then, if I was wrong. Sit down. It's all right, thanks. Sit down! I understand you prefer being up there with the men than down here with us. I don't see what you mean. What did you tell Hibbert? Hibbert? I didn't say... Don't I... lie. I'm not lying. Why should I you lie? You insulted Trotter and Hibbert by not coming. You realise that, I suppose. Well, I didn't mean to do anything like well, that. Well, you did. You know now, don't you? Hmm? I say, you know now, don't you? Yes. I'm sorry. My officers work together. I'll have no damn prigs. I'll speak to Trotter and Hibbert. I, I'm, I'm awfully sorry, Dennis, if, if I annoyed you by coming to your company. What on earth are you talking about? You resent my being here. I don't know what you mean. I resent you being a fool, that's all. You better eat your dinner before it's cold. I'm not... Hungry, thanks. Oh, sit down and eat it like a man. I can't eat it. Thanks. Are you going to eat your dinner? Oh, good God, don't you understand? How can I sit down and eat that when... when Osborne's lying up? You little swine. You think that you're the only soul who cares. You can sit there and drink champagne and... And smoke cigars. The one man I could talk to as man to man who understood everything, and you think I don't care. Oh, but how can you, Enos? To forget, you little fool, to forget, you understand, to forget. You think there's no limit to what a man can bear? <laughs> I, I'm awfully sorry, Dennis. I, I, I didn't understand. You don't know how I felt. Go away. Please leave me alone. Well, can't I... Oh, get out! For God's sake, get out! I'm... sorry. Sir? <laughs> Sir? Yeah? Is that, that you, Mason? This morning, sir. Up past five. Oh, right. I was only half asleep. It's so frightfully cold in here. Oh, I've made some hot tea, sir. Oh, good. And um, take some to the officers in there. Wake them up. Very good, sir. Wash and brush up, Cuppins. Oh, hello, Trotter. I thought you were asleep. Oh, I had a decent sleep when I came off duty. Oh, it'll be getting light soon. You'd better buck up. All right. Sounds quiet enough out there. Yes. Here are, sir. Ah, that's what I want. A decent cup of tea. I've cut a packet of sandwiches for each gentleman, sir. Ah, good. When you've cleared up your kitchen, Mason, you must dress and join your platoon in the line. Very good, sir. If things are going well at 11 o'clock, come down here and do your best to get some lunch for us. We shall come down in turn as we can. Very good, sir. Runner! Sir? Take this note to battalion headquarters. There's no reply. Yes, sir. Morning, Sergeant Major. Morning, sir. Wiring parties are just in, sir. Good. Everything quiet. Guns are going on down south. Not sure if it ain't spreading up this way, sir. Very likely. The officers are coming up in a minute. They'll stand by with their platoons. I must stay here for a while in case of messages. I shall come up directly things begin to happen. Very good, sir. Are the men having their tea? Uh, yes, sir. We'll let them have a decent drop of rum. About um, half again, sir? Yes. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, if the attack don't come, how long are we to stand to? We must expect the attack any time up till midday. After then, I don't think it'll come till tomorrow. Very good, sir. All right, Sergeant Major. I'll see you up there soon. Yes, sir. Take your sandwiches, sir. Half bully beef and half sardine. Uh, sardine on top, sir. Oh, 
How delicious. No pâté de foie gras? No what, sir? No pâté de foie gras? No, sir. The milkman ain't been yet. <laughs> Get dressed as soon as you can. Yes, sir. All ready, Skipper. Want me to go up? Yes. Go round the line and see everything's all right. I'll be up soon. Hello, hello. Over on Lance's Alley. Somewhere by the reserve line. That's nearer. Better go up, Trotter. Call the others. Hibbert! Rally, come on. Cheer us, Hibbert. See you later. Send your runner down to tell me how things are going. Do you want me to go up? Yes, Trotter's gone. Right. Uh, Chiro, Stanner. Chiro, Rally. I shall be coming up soon. Hibbert? Hibbert, what are you doing? Come along, man. You want me to go up now? Yes, the others have gone. Uh, you've got a drop of water, all that champagne and stuff's dried my mouth out. Oh, here you are. Hmm? Do you have any tea? Uh, I, yes, it was a bit sweet, though. Stretcher, Come on, buck up, Hibbert. Uh, there's no appalling hurry, is there? Well, the longer you stay here, the harder it'll be to go up. Oh, good Lord, you don't think I'm trying You're to... just wasting as much time as you well, can. It's no good going up till I feel fit. Let's just have another spot of water. I'll go right along, sir. I've made up the fire to last a good three hours. All right, Mason. Mr. Hibbert's coming up now. You can go along with him. Oh, I'd like to come along with you, Mr. Hibbert, if you don't mind, sir. I ain't been up in this part of the front line. Well, Mr. Hibbert will show you the way. Keep your men against the back wall of the trench, Hibbert, as long as the shells are dropping behind. All right. Cheer up. Cheer up. Sir. Yes. A message from Mr. Trotter, sir. Shells falling mostly behind the support line. Who's just been hit? Uh, Corporal Ross, sir. Men he dropped in the trench at the corner. All right, thanks. So. Captain Sanum. What is it, son, Major? It's Mr. Riley, sir. He's been hit, sir. Bit of shells got him in the back. Badly. Afraid he's broke his spine, sir. Can't move his legs. Bring him down here. Down here, sir? Yes, down here, quickly. Right, sir. Lay him down. Mr. Osborne's bed. He's painted, sir. Have they dressed the wound? Just put a pad on it, sir. Can't do no more. Uh, go at once and bring two men with the stretcher. We'll never get him down, sir, with them shells falling on last. Did you hear what I said? Go and get two men with the stretcher. Very good, sir. Hello, Dennis. Well, Jimmy, you got one quickly. Something hit me in the back. Knocked me clean over. Sort of winded me. I'm all right now. Steady, old boy. Just lie there quietly for a bit. I'll be much better if I get up and walk about. Happened once before. I, I got kicked at Rugger. It, it just numbs you for a bit. What's that rumbling noise? The guns making a bit of a row. I say, Dennis. Yes, old boy? It, it hasn't gone through, has it? It only just hit me and knocked me down. It's just gone through a bit, Jimmy. I won't have to go on lying here. Well, I'm going to have you taken away. Away? Where? Down to the dressing station. You've got a blighty one, Jimmy. But I, I, I can't go home just for, for a knock in the back. I'm certain... I'll be better if I get up. Oh, God. Oh, God, that's hurt. It's bound to hurt, Jimmy. What's on my legs? Something holding them down. It's all right, old chap. It's just the shock. Numbed them. It's awfully decent of you to bother, Dennis. I feel rotten lying here. Everybody else up there. Well, it's not your fault, Jimmy. So... Damn silly getting hit. Is that just a drop of water? It's got some tea leaves in it. Do you mind? No, that's all right. Yeah. Thanks. I, 
I say, Dennis, don't you wait. If you want to be getting on... It's quite all right, Jimmy. Can you stay for a bit? Of course I can. Thanks awfully. Dennis. Yes, old boy. Could we have a light? So frightfully dark. Cold. Sure. I'll get another blanket. Is that better, Jimmy? 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 A message from Mr. Trotter, sir. Will you come at once? Mr. Trotter, sir, says, will you come at once? All right, Broughton. I'm coming. Journey's End was written by R.C. Sheriff and adapted for radio by Peter Watts. Captain Stanup was played by Martin Jarvis, Osborne by Garrard Green, and Raleigh by Derek Seaton. Hibbert was played by Michael Harbour, Trotter by Kevin Brennan, Colonel by Richard Herndl, Sergeant Major by John Bentley, Mason by Malcolm Hayes, Hardy by John Graham, German Soldier by Patrick Tull, Private by Michael Harbour. The play was produced by Christopher Venning. And that production was first broadcast in 1970.